Hey, Walking Dead fans, welcome back to the channel. Let's go over a little subject that's been going over before. I've went over it in some videos, and I've even done a review video on the webisode The Oath. I will leave a link in the description below, and I will also be showing actually a whole bunch of that video, the edit of that video, in this video as well. But you can catch more details and a complete review of the webisode The Oath uh, by following the link in the description below. You can also find many more reviews of different things on the channel. You can check it out. And I'll also put a playlist link down in the description below to all of the webisode reviews. So this video is a question we've gone over a little bit in the comments recently, talking about some stuff. Um, we've talked about the timeline between a few of you guys. And this is the, answering the question, how did Rick survive the coma, uh, waking up from the coma, uh, the time he was in the coma when the hospital wasn't working and all that, you know, how did that work out? So of course it's TV production. And if you look at the scene and what they set up in the show and everything, you're going to just find a lot of, you know, it's not going to answer the question. It's going to actually go, why is that? Why is that? Why is that? And it's just because the producers and directors, whatever, didn't think it through, didn't really think about it, didn't go to all those little details, right? So we're going to find some anomalies and crazy stuff just because of TV, right? Because as fans, we're going to nitpick it. But I do think they put this webisode out there, the oath to try to answer that question even though it's full of holes as well. But let's take a look at that other video to try to answer the question a little bit and, and we'll discuss it. The interesting thing is that the oath takes place at the Harrison Memorial Hospital, the same place where Rick is at, still in a coma. Now this webisode answers a few key questions we had, but opens up a few as well. Who wrote on the cafeteria doors? What else happened at the hospital? Who's the doctor that helps the people in this webisode? Where is Rick and... Do they ever interact? So real quick, just a little run through of the um, webisode and what's going on. I explain it more in the actual The Oath review. But these two characters, their camp got run over. Pretty much everyone else were killed by walkers, a, a horde of walkers coming through their camp. These two escape. The guy gets a bad cut on his chest, stomach somewhere from a piece of glass. They're looking for a hospital. They're looking for medical supplies. And everything seems to be boarded up. They break their way in to try to get some medical supplies because it looks like this guy's bleeding out and she really wants to help him. So that's the setup. These two characters, their camp's overrun, one's hurt. They go into the hospital that Rick was in a coma and they find someone. After getting inside, Karina's looking around in this closet for some medical supplies and a walker attacks, but somebody saves them. Dr. Marconis, Gail, come on. Yes, a lot of, of bad things happened here. But those walking bodies had nothing to do with it. So they pretty much go back and check on Paul and the doctor says, hey, he's about to die. You know, she had already strapped him down just in case. And she's like, I got to, you know, he's, he's pretty much dead. So I'm going to take him on out of here. So, of course, that was pretty devastating to Karina. It didn't seem like a wound that would kill you, but it is the apocalypse. The doctor wheels Paul into a room full of walkers that she has barricaded, the cafeteria. And this is the iconic doors that we're going to see a little bit later. But we're also going to find out that most of those walkers in that cafeteria were given a lethal injection by the doctor. From the doctor's account, it was all of their choices. I don't want to live in this world anymore. It's kind of like a Jenner um, when he blew himself up or decided to stay in the CDC making a choice. I don't want to live in the world that's outside. It's kind of the same thing. People, patients come into uh, the hospital. The doctor tries to help them. But it almost seems like she talks them into it at the same time. So that's the edge of, is she crazy or is she not? Is she actually trying to kill everybody that comes through? Has she killed everybody that comes through and seeks her help? We don't know, but it really seems uh, like maybe she's off the deep end to me. So as you can see, the, the nurse is a little bit on the edge, but that'll be a good discussion down below. Is she really crazy? Is she not? Is she really trying to do it? Is she not? Was it intentional? What's her plans? What was her real goal? Why aren't there other survivors? 
hold up there with her or did she just fix them up and they decide I don't want to die by your lethal injection I'm going to move on and she just let them go um, because she did say back in the beginning and maybe that's um, if you watch the oath review there was a aide or nurse's aide or something like that that got in a closet with her and hid and at some point people even that they had helped and let go came back with some other people, I think, as well, and they took that girl. And she don't know what happened to her. They just took her. And um, so maybe at that point it was almost like a terminus thing where terminus people tried to help people. They put up the signs that said, come, you know, we'll help you and, and everything and grow stronger. But people came and took them over and raped their women and beat them up and, and everything. So they started killing everybody that come through instead so that that wouldn't happen again so it's very possible that this nurse is like you know i'm not going to let that happen again i'm not going to let you go and then you go out and get somebody to come back and uh take this place over or hurt me so you know you're going in the cafeteria he finds karina and the doctor who he's figured out the karina thinking paul was dead is like look it's over. I want it to end. So the doctor had given her a lethal injection. And by the time Paul reaches them, it's too late. So, of course, Paul is, is pretty angry. But the doctor tells him that she is providing a people a choice between fighting for life and a nonviolent, peaceful way of not dying alone. So, of course, Paul is mad. And the doctor just tells him about how she just is providing all these people a choice of life out there fighting for life and survival and each other fighting other people or dying peacefully it is something to think about makes you kind of ponder things but paul he points his gun at her and she's like if you think i'm the bad guy go ahead and kill me but it does a cut it switches scenes and we don't hear a gunshot we never see the doctor again we don't know if Paul pulled the trigger. So we don't know if the doctor is even still around. My guess is he pulled the trigger or something else happened to the doctor because we don't see her anywhere even after Rick gets up. So it was my take on it that the nurse didn't really even try to save the guy and pretty much just wheeled him in there for walker food or to become a walker. And she was going to talk the girl's way pretty much into suicide as well and she would have become a walker and also been wheeled into the cafeteria that's that's what i think and that's what i think the cafeteria was full of a lot of people that come through at least since the girl got taken from the closet that that nurse's aid thing happened but they definitely set up this webisode and this nurse in the same hospital with the doors and everything really showing you hey this is the hospital rick woke up in that that's the only plausible explanation that we can really give you is that this nurse was still in the hospital nursing the few patients that were left. And if they were able to, uh, I guess, uh, verbally say, I want to live uh, and leave or I want to die, she would help them out either way. So we go into the thing of Rick waking up, the gurney. Did she put the gurney back every time in front of the door and things like that? But not before going back and spray painting, don't open, dead inside, or don't dead open inside, however you want to read it. Which could be one of the most iconic images of the whole series. And that's the end of the webisode. But there's a, a gap in the timeline, or what I say, a, a long stretch in the timeline that they say, or it kind of works out if you do the math and try to put it together. Rick was in the coma for a while, if not a month, over a month. And I don't mean the whole time he was in a coma. Once the hospital went down, and Shane put the gurney up against the door. There's no sign that the gurney was moved or anybody had been taking care of Rick. It is possible that the doctor moved the gurney back, took care of Rick, put the gurney back in the, at the door to, I guess, maybe try to help walkers not going in. That is a possibility, and I think that's kind of what they want us to believe to um, explain how Rick survived the, all that time. It's really the best explanation we have, even though there's really no clues that she even took care of him. And uh, one big thing that I say 
the reason that she didn't is one, the gurney's still in front of the door, and two, she had this weird knack of giving people lethal injections, but she did have this oath, she said, or she did have this uh, philosophy, they had to make the choice. And if Rick's in a coma, he can't verbally make that choice. So maybe she did take care of him and not give him a lethal injection because he hadn't woke up yet. He wasn't able to give her a verbal, yes, I want that choice of dying. So does it answer a bunch of questions and raise a few more, or does it answer all the questions? Like I say, I do think the production was trying to answer the question, but actually kind of threw in a lot more loopholes. But that's my take on that. So how did Rick survive his coma? Supposedly this nurse, right? Otherwise, I mean, come on. You can't last more than a few days without water and being hydrated in that bag. Uh, IVs hooked up to didn't last, you know, over a month, that kind of thing. Uh, there's just too many. Uh, uh, Shane tried to pick him up and then didn't really cover him back up good before he went out and put the gurney in front. And when it shows Rick again, he's covered up good. I mean, there's just, I could go on and on and on and on. And it really, to me, points back to a production thing. And I look past that when I watch it, and I try not to think too far into it because I realize it's a production thing, and I back up, and I go, okay, what did they intend the story to be? And I just kind of go with it. You know, it's a zombie fantasy show. That's kind of what you got to do. But I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you enjoy many more. I hope you check out the channel if you haven't. Be a subscriber if you're not. And I hope you guys are safe out there. This is James in Nashville patiently awaiting the season 10 finale. And one thing of note that I hear there's going to be news of the finale at uh, the at-home Comic-Con thing. That's not till the end of July, so it's going to be the way it's looking anyway. It's going to be past the end of July. It's going to be August, September. Who knows when we're actually going to get it. Damn it. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more dead stuff.